Hey there, it's time for our first discussion video. This is where we're going to take a deeper look at what we talk about during story time. I won't be making one of these for every story video, but we are going to do it once in a while when there's something interesting to talk about. And today we're going to talk about our villain, Xehanort. I think Xehanort's a fascinating villain, and I think a lot of the time he doesn't get all the credit he deserves. I think it's easy to peg Xehanort as just a typical villain who wants to use darkness to overtake everything because he's kind of a jerk. And certainly, his appearance and his voice are both really effective at making him look like someone that you feel like you want to be. But because of that, I think it's a little easy to forget that that's not what he actually wants. Xehanort doesn't want to use the darkness to stamp out the light. What he wants is for them to coexist. He wants them to be in balance, and he doesn't feel like the current universe has that. What he sees is people using the power of light to get rid of the darkness, and he doesn't think that it should be that simple. Now, it's important to know that the balance of light and dark, or good and evil, is at the core of a lot of Eastern philosophy. The idea is that you can't have one without having the other. They give each other meaning. It's the kind of thing you often see really wise characters saying, but here we have a villain saying it. The reason Xehanort uses the power of darkness isn't that he thinks it's better, but he feels like light is overtaking it too much. My favorite phrase that he uses is the tyranny of light. To him, even if the intention is good, taking over everything using the power of light is oppressive. If light and dark should be in balance, as a lot of philosophy tells us it should, what does that make us? We are constantly using the light to kill the darkness. We spend every Kingdom Hearts game doing it, and you can assume that we're going to do it in the next one. Now, we're always protecting and saving people, so we know that we're doing something good. But does that necessarily mean we're not doing something bad? It's easy to write off, but really think about it for a minute. What if Xehanort's right? What if we're disrupting the balance by always using the light to take out the darkness? This question is at the heart of Birth by Sleep, and we're going to see a lot of it as we go on. Now, the question can be raised, if Xehanort's just looking for a balance and not to take over everything with darkness, is he actually evil at all? In the end, yeah, he is. But it's not because of what he wants, it's what he's willing to do to get it. His goal is to create a new world, where darkness and light coexist peacefully. But the necessary question becomes, what happens to this world? And for him, the answer is simple. You get rid of it. Xehanort's serving what he thinks is the greater good, but in this we see a key aspect of his personality. He has no regard for human life. Remorse is something we almost never see from Xehanort. In fact, it doesn't even seem like he hesitates a lot of the time. He has a goal and he's going to reach it no matter the cost. That cost, by the way, is literally everyone and everything. In fact, there's only one time where we even see a shred of humanity in this guy. After he's experimented on his apprentice in a way that will probably kill him, he leaves him on a beach because it's a nicer place to die. Which, yeah, is kind of thoughtful, but maybe you shouldn't experiment on your apprentices. That would be... that'd be cool. So this is what makes Xehanort the bad guy. What he wants may actually be for the best. We can't really know. But the way that he goes about it is unconscionable. It doesn't mean he's not interesting, though. I think it's really cool that they decided to go this route with him. It would have been effortless to make him a typical maniacal madman who uses the darkness to kill people because he can. I think by adding this other layer, this belief in the rightness of his cause that may actually be something good, we get a much more rounded and well thought out villain, who is a lot harder to read. But that's not all I want to talk about with Xehanort. There's something else that's essential to know to understanding it, and that is that Xehanort thinks of everything. You would be forgiven for thinking that Xehanort's kind of a loser. I mean, he seems to try to take Kingdom Hearts all the time and it never really seems to work out. But here's the thing, and I tried to talk about this a little before, but Xehanort has a very scientific mind. Everything he does in this series is an experiment. Again, no one's ever opened Kingdom Hearts before, so he's trying to see if he can do it. There's different ways of going about it, and he doesn't really know which one's going to work, so he makes contingency plans. A lot of them. In fact, Xehanort doesn't do anything without having a plan for if it fails. One of the most difficult things about having a serial villain is that it gets harder and harder to take them seriously as they keep losing every time. There's plenty of examples of this. We can think about Team Rocket from Pokemon, or even the Decepticons from Transformers. It's really easy to make it seem like the villains are just bungling things because they can't win. But when Xehanort's plans don't work out, he always has another one. We're going to start to see this soon as we talk about Birth by Sleep, chronologically the first game in the series. He spends the entire game trying a specific method to open Kingdom Hearts, but at the same time, he's planting seeds for a new plan that'll take effect if his doesn't work. And it's not that he doesn't have faith in his plans, he just wants to have options in case it doesn't work out. It's important to know because getting inside his head is going to make a lot of what he does make more sense. In games of strategy, the winner is usually the person who can read a few moves ahead, and that's what Xehanort's trying to do. He's trying to make sure that he is always ahead of anyone that might oppose him. We'll talk more about Xehanort as we see his plans unfold, but there's one other thing we should cover today, 
And that's our buddy, Mickey Mouse. Now, Mickey's history is something that, for the most part, we don't see that directly. We get a lot of information in pieces, and we kind of have to fill the gaps ourselves. But there's one thing I'd like to clear up, because a lot of people seem to be confused by it. We see the country of the Musketeers as a world from the past in Dream Drop Distance, the last Kingdom Hearts game that came out. Now, a lot of people, and I include myself here when I first played it, assume that Country of the Musketeers is part of the world that has Disney Castle in it. Because Minnie's a princess, and she eventually becomes the queen with Mickey as the king, it all seems to fit. That's not the case, though, and I think a lot of people missed the dialogue that told us this, because when I was doing research, I found that a lot of people were still debating it. So without getting into the story of Doom Drop Distance, Mickey says the following. My name's Mickey. I'm working on a problem. That's why I'm in this world being a musketeer. And Sora replies, so, I'm in a world the king visited that I don't know about. So this is definitely a new world, one that's separate from Disney Castle's world. Now, we know for a fact that Pete was in Timeless River, and the fact that he's in this world means that he was able to cross over somehow, which makes the problem Mickey's working on probably Pete. Now, what's interesting is that we never see Minnie in Timeless River, even though she was in the Steamboat Willie cartoon. Now, I doubt that they were planning that far ahead and knew that Minnie came from another world, but it does match up nicely, and I think that we can assume that this is the way things went until we see otherwise. As for how the Timeless River went from being the 1920s to somehow medieval Europe combined with Disney World, you could argue that going to the world of the Musketeers gave Mickey and Minnie some ideas of how to change things, but honestly, I would say just don't think about it too much. So that's all for today. Hopefully you appreciate Xehanort a little bit more. He may be a jerk, but he's an interesting jerk, and I think that's the most we can ask for. See you next time!